The city of Golden Valley has settled a lawsuit with its former interim police chief. The League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust paid and settled the suit with $162,500 on Golden Valley's behalf. Scott Natto and his attorneys filed a federal lawsuit against the city, claiming reverse discrimination this summer. Natto, a white man, claims he was the top applicant for the permanent police job, but was passed over because the city preferred now Chief Virgil Green, a black man. A statement from Susan Tyndall, an attorney who represented the city in the case, said the city admits no wrongdoing or liability. Natto received $97,500 and his attorney received $65,000. All claims against the defendant were dropped. We will have Tyndall's full statement posted at ccxmedia.org. Also in Golden Valley, officials celebrated Black History Month at its city council meeting. Mary Harris, a singer and friend of Mayor Roslyn Harmon's, kicked off the meeting with the Black National Anthem. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Harmon acknowledged herself, Police Chief Virgil Green, and Assistant Chief Alice White for their historic leadership roles within the city. She also recognized Rudy Perez as the first Latino Assistant Chief. Harmon also shared some history. In the 1980s, Golden Valley was the first city to start Black History Month programming. You may recognize a familiar face behind the top desk at a Brooklyn Center nonprofit. As Kevin Miller reports, Cappy USA has hired a longtime employee as its new CEO. In her office just off Brooklyn Boulevard, Mary Nita Meyer says she's always felt at home at Cappy USA. I'm a Korean adoptee, so I came to the U.S. Um, when I was very young, and um, I think coming to Cappy, I found a place of belonging um, for one of the first times. She's worked in several roles at the nonprofit, which serves immigrants, refugees, and people of color. I love Cappy and have been here for over 10 years, and... Um, the work and the community inspires me. When the CEO role opened up last summer, she took over on an interim basis. Now she stepped into the role permanently. And as she settles in, she says the need in the Brooklyn Center community is as high as ever. In the food shelf right now, it's a very high demand. So we've been struggling to keep up with it and are looking for um, more food, more volunteers. And with the expanding need for food comes plans to expand Cappy's building. The organization got about $3 million from the legislature for an expansion last year. They're still about a year and a half from breaking ground. We are going to be adding a greenhouse and community gardens and a cafe so that folks can buy, grow, sell, donate, and receive uh, food. But in the meantime, Nita Meyer is looking forward to Twin Cities World Refugee Day. It's an annual festival that Cappy holds in June to honor refugees. It's celebrating their contributions, their, their art, their cultures, their food. So it'll just be a really great time for the community to come together. It's all part of Cappy's plan to continue serving the community for years to come. I think, yeah, the vision for the next five years is really becoming a community hub for Brooklyn Center in the northwest suburbs. In Brooklyn Center, Kevin Miller, CCX News. Transitioning into high school and choosing what classes to take can be intimidating for a freshman. But as Delane Cleveland reports in this edition of Standout Student, a senior at Wyzetta High School has come up with a way to make that process a little easier. So we'll, yeah, we'll just go through the various departments. Lectures are part of the high school experience. It's very different depending on the student. However, it so pretty much just outlines. This discussion isn't being led by a teacher. Cool. In fact, it's not even a class. So the freshman social studies is the human geography. It's a committee meeting for Wyzetta's course ambassador program, which Daniel Argento started as a sophomore. Given the vast you know amount of courses that we have, I b believe it's over 300. You know, I felt the need to have a, a, a kind of a process or system in place that helps students navigate that process of selecting courses. Check out the new uh, course catalog. The idea is to make class registration as simple as possible for incoming freshmen. All right, so kind of moving forward, what, what's our next step? Argento saw the old system they had in place and sought to improve it. Up until this point, there wasn't really anything from the student end of 
helping students navigate that process. It was primarily by means of wor word of mouth. If you talk to the staff members at Wyzetta. He's one of those kids that, um, you know, goes the extra mile um, for the things that he cares about. All right, social studies. They'll tell you that Argento is about as well-rounded a student as you can find. He is so talented in just a variety of ways and has just really diverse interests. First semester. In addition to starting the course ambassador program, he's also played multiple sports, he's on the student council, and he has a keen interest in linguistics. I conducted a year-long research study um, with mentors from the Minnesota Department of Education and I got to work with English language learner students and kind of see how they interact with test questions on the Math Minnesota Comprehensive Assessment. All the students have to take English 9. Because of that experience, his goal is to become fluent in multiple languages. It's important to but first, he has to finish his senior year. He only has a few months left, but the course ambassador program he started will live on. Looking ahead, He is going to do great things because he's already done great things. In Plymouth, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. In the fall, Argento will attend Stanford University, where he plans to study linguistics and computer science. The Shops at Arbor Lakes in Maple Grove is looking for some talented artists to showcase their work this summer. Applications are now open for the 22nd annual Arbor Lakes Art Fair. The art fair features work from more than 45 local artists. Event organizers are looking for people who specialize in crafts such as ceramics, leather goods, painting, jewelry, and photography, to name a few. The application deadline is April 26th, and the fee is $30. The art fair itself is July 13th and 14th. If you want to apply, we'll have more information on our website at ccxmedia.org. It hasn't been a great winter for skiers, but the show must go on. Spots in the state alpine meet were on the line for local teams in Section 5. Jay Wilcox has highlights. Wild Mountain, the site for the Section 5 alpine meet. Starting with the girls, Benilde's Grace Horacy has the fastest time in the second run and that helps her place third overall to advance to state. The Red Knights are third as a team. Sophomore Sonia Pendergast of Wyzetta is headed back to state for a third straight season. Pendergast is fourth with a two-run time of 102.44. Lara DePau of Benilde takes 10th place to grab one of the individual spots at state from the section. Also advancing, Mary Foster of Hopkins, who has the eighth best second run and places 14th overall. And her teammate Sammy Armitage is also state bound. Minnetonka and Brainerd advances teams. To the boys side, Hopkins advances by placing second as a team. Scott Jensen in 16th place is the top Royals skier. Simon McMahon of Benilde has the fifth best second run and places ninth to advance as an individual. Nigel Josephs of Wyzetta has a rough landing at the end, but he's headed to state by placing 11th. His Trojans just miss out as a team taking third. Right behind Josephs, Bennett Erickson of Benilde is headed to state finishing 12th. And Jack Parker of Wyzetta grabs the last individual spot at state placing 14th. Here's what girls qualifier Pendergast had to say. I felt pretty good. The snow was very soft, so it was just very difficult to make some good turns, but overall I felt good. I finished two solid runs, so that's, that's what counts. It was good. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Two of the state's best girls hockey teams faced off Tuesday in a non-conference playoff tune-up for both clubs. Second ranked in Class AA, Hill Murray coming to St. Louis Park to take on fifth ranked Benilde St. Margaret's. Second period of a scoreless game, the Red Knights' Ava Mickelson passes to Tala Hansen, and Hansen beats the goalie on the short side. 16th goal of the season for the freshman, and it's 1-0 BSM. Later in the period, good passing here by Hill Murray. J.C. Chatlane scores for the Pioneers, her 21st of the season. It comes on the power play. It's a 1-1 game through two periods. Park Center High School graduate and U.S. Hockey Hall of Famer Chrissy Wendell Pohl and her husband Johnny Pohl, the co-head coaches for the Pioneers. There's no more scoring the rest of the way, but plenty of outstanding goaltending. Red Knights goalies Ellie Hancock and Demetra Walsma combined for 30 saves on the night to keep it 1-1. At the other end, it's Pioneers goalie Grace Jean stopping Hansen. Jean with 46 saves on the night. This game ends in a 1-1 tie. 
Benilde is the top seed in Section 6AA. They have a bye in the next week's semifinals. Third seeded Wyzetta, fourth seed Armstrong Cooper, and seventh seed Hopkins Park all open with quarterfinal round games on Saturday. In Section 5AA, Maple Grove is the number two seed behind Centennial Spring Lake Park. The Crimson, along with Champlain Park Coon Rapids, Rogers, and Osseo Park Center all play in the quarterfinal round this coming Saturday. Heritage Christian Boys Basketball is having another solid season. The Eagles are 14-4 on the year, but faced a tough conference opponent in Legacy Christian. Chaz Moots has more. The Eagles and the Lions both came in a Tuesday night with an 8-1 record in the MCAA. First half, Micah Strand finds Dom Zoa in the corner for three. Zoa had 15 total points on the night. Heritage responds with a three of their own. Owen Haig knuckleball triple from up top. Three of his team high 17. Then it's Haig dishing it this time to Jonah Moulton. He hits the three. Eagles up at halftime, 44 to 40. After the break, Josh O'Kea in transition, a little hesitation into the Euro finish. Eagles up three. But here comes Legacy. Evan Bovey open from the corner, splashes it home, lines in front now, and LCA would roll from there. This time Bovey on the and one back cut. The Lions finish the game strong and get the win over Heritage, 80 to 74. In Maple Grove, Chaz Moots, CCX Sports.